who has been for 19 years. Um, he's a commercial pilot, and I have five children, ranges from ages 17 to almost 10. Um, so, as my dad said, I am his youngest daughter. of five girls, so my dad had a, a lot with five daughters, no boys, for me, but <laughs> um, it'd be great. Excuse me if I get emotional today, because um, <laughs> I love talking about it, don't get me wrong, but when my dad asked me to talk about him, I didn't even hesitate to say yes. Um, he's my second child, as I said, and um, I love talking about him. It, it gives me such peace and comfort to keep his um, spirit alive. We actually just celebrated his 15th birthday, and he died at around the age of eight months old. Um, as I said, today is Mother's Day, and I have five beautiful children. Four that are here and one in heaven. Let me share my story with you and let me know just how much it has blessed my life. My son Logan was born April 11th, 2006, weighing 5 pounds, 15 ounces, and 18 inches long. A lot of people ask me how I dealt with losing a child. A lot of them would actually say, I don't know how you did that. I could never go through that. I didn't choose it. And I said the same thing as they did, how I could never do that. It's the hardest thing in the entire world. So it's funny how you end up doing things that you never thought you could do. Um, when Logan was born, he um, didn't pink up. He was very pale in color. And so the doctors just thought, oh, he has immature lungs. Even though he's only three days early, they admitted him straight away to the NICU at the hospital where testing was done and they did an echocardiogram, which came back negative. After my miserable stay in the NICU, like feeling like the luckiest mom in the world because I was able to go home. Like I saw other moms there that had babies that were there for months. And I'm like, oh yes, I get to go home and I get to raise my baby and everything's great. He's healthy and happy and everything's good. About two months into his life, my sister, who's a nurse, says to me, don't you think he looks a little dusty? And I was so offended. <laughs> like, how would you say that? Like, I'm his mom. I would notice if he had, his color was off. And four months into his life, um, went on and um, we, my husband and I decided to take a trip to Jackson Hole, Wyoming to go visit his parents that were up there. And while we were up there, Logan wouldn't pink up. Like, his breathing patterns were off. His coloring was very, like, he was so blue. His nails were blue and his lips were blue. And I couldn't figure out what the heck was going on. So I turned to my husband. We only stayed, like, one night because he was doing really weird patterns of breathing in his sleep. And I turned to my husband and I said, we need to go home, something's wrong with Logan. Um, so we got home and as we were driving down, I noticed that he started to pink up a little bit. And so I told my dad, who was also a surgeon, and I said, dad, what do you think this could be? He's all, he may have a heart problem. I didn't want to hear that. <laughs> but I didn't waste any time running him to the um, hospital where they admitted him for overnight testing. The hardest thing was watching my child be held down by doctors and nurses. Um, and the rest they were putting IVs in his head and his arms. I remember him looking back at me like, Mom, what is going on? At this time, he, keep in mind, he's only four months old. Um, he got so mad, he actually had a blue spell. And his saturations dropped to 20. I don't know if you guys know about saturations. He up in the 90s, and he, his dropped out of the 20s. And it scared me, and I, I was trying to go toward him, and the doctors and nurses pushed me away and said, let me, like, well, let us take care of it. And I said, no, I'm his mom. I nursed him before. He's done this once before, and I calmed him down that way. They wouldn't let me try to calm him down. They just continued to do their thing. The next thing I know, an ambulance was there to take him up to Premier Children's Hospital. So I rode up in the ambulance um, with him while my husband followed me in the car. And um, I started crying because my baby disappeared from me the moment we got to the hospital. I had no idea what was going on. Finally, a doctor um, came up to me and told me, that Logan had a heart problem, that he had what is called tetralogy of the low, a total pulmonary artery venous return, and a BSC, or easily known as a hole in the heart. She actually told me that it was amazing that he had lived as long as he had. She said that he, they'd never seen that combination in a heart before, and so they actually referred to him as the miracle baby. It was so hard to hear that my baby had to have surgery. My first question to the doctor was, please don't sugarcoat this. Is my baby going to live? She said, we're gonna do all that we can. I wanted an answer that just stated, yes, your baby's gonna be fine. He's gonna be great. You guys are gonna be just fine. Um, 
Corey and we were finally able to see him after they did all those testing because they had to sedate him. We were finally able to see him and in the PICU, on the PICU floor, and he, um, they just finished our echocardiogram on him. When he woke up, he had all these tubes and wires all over him. I couldn't, we made it really hard for him to hold him. And then the cardiologist or the thoracic surgeon came in and he talked to me about um, what was going to take place the next day. And they prepped Logan for surgery, and at 7 a.m. on August 10th, 2006, Logan went in for eight and a half hour surgery. We were able to walk with him down the hall, laying as he was laying on the hospital bed. As we walked by his side, all I could remember is the way he looked at us, like he was telling us he was going to be okay. And he came out, he was so pink. He was innovated for about four days. His skin color looked amazing. And it made it really hard for me to hold him because he had all the tubes and wires, but after seven days, long in the PICU floor, we were able to move to the recovery floor, where he spent about five more days there. He was so happy he could breathe. And once we were able to go home, he had to continue on oxygen to help with the recovery process. He did great for about seven weeks until he noticed some of the symptoms coming back again. I, I had lost at this point, thinking, why me? Why Logan? I found myself praying for some kind of a miracle. We found ourselves back at the primary children's hospital, where the cardiologist said he had obstruction of the veins. So his heart was totally fine. It was the scar tissue that had developed in his veins. It wasn't pumping enough blood to his heart. I asked her if she thought I was going to be okay, and she said that we hope so. I was so angry at God. I didn't want to pray. I didn't want to see anybody. I was so mad. I didn't. I just didn't understand why I deserved this. I had completely lost faith. Logan's second surgery was scheduled for October 2nd. It just so happened that General Conference was aired the day before. As we were watching it, it mentioned a lot about faith and prayers and how Heavenly Father hears all of our prayers. And even though we may not agree with His will, He is doing what is best for us. Um, I thought that was funny with everything I was going through. I was experiencing they, they were talking about General Conference. It was just what I needed to hear. We didn't pray for Logan to recover, but we did pray for to understand and deal with the will of God. When Logan went in for his second surgery, it was six hours long, and what Dr. Curtis did was he opened up his little veins with a stent and pushed back as much as he could to hope that it wouldn't scar over again. Um, Thirteen weeks passed, and I felt like everything was great. I never knew the quality of life that Logan would have, but I was so happy that Heavenly Father let him live. On December 14, 2006, we went back to primary children's because we once again noticed the signs and symptoms. At this time, we were told that Logan only had two weeks to a month to live. After they performed a heart pad test, they said the left side of his heart is completely gone, and only going, it's just a matter of time until the right side. Cora and I were so heartbroken to hear that Logan wasn't going to be with us much longer. We couldn't understand why Heavenly Father would take him from us. I was asking Heavenly Father why. Why do you leave Logan? And then literally heard a voice in my head say, Shannon, do you think you could take better care of him than I can? Of course, I didn't think that I could leave Logan to care that our Father in heaven could. So whenever I found myself saying, Why me? I had to pray for peace to know that everything would be all right. Looking back on this experience, I remember feeling upset and confused. But I know that I had to get to the point where I, where I could to let Logan go. I couldn't stand to watch him suffer anymore. Every night he would be up like a newborn, wanting to eat every hour and a half. He was breathing about 80 breaths per minute, and he was burning a lot of calories, so he was hungry a lot. I was so worn out, but I can't imagine how he felt. I couldn't bear to see him like that. I remember two nights before Logan passed away, he wouldn't let me put him down. And I was so tired from being up all night with him the night before. Um, as I was holding him and crying, I was telling Heavenly Father, please let him go. Please take him. I'm ready to let him go. I kept saying, please don't make him suffer anymore. I turned to Corey and I said, I'm really ready to let him go now. It's ironic because the next day he became so ill that we had to take him to primary children's hospital. They intubated him so that he wouldn't have to work so hard to breathe on his own. The doctors told us he was slowly dying. For 48 hours, Logan was intubated until Corey and I felt we could say goodbye. We had family members come and see him one last time. His older sister, Kesley, loved him so much. When she saw him, she obviously didn't understand what was going on, but smiled and said, hi, Logan, I love you. 
Logan's eyes suddenly popped open. He didn't open up for anybody else. He just opened up for her. And it was like he wanted to see her one last time. After saying goodbye to family and Kesley, Cora and I went into the private room where we took his IVs and tubes out of Logan and placed him in my arms. I felt, um, I, I held him for two and a half hours. He died at 6.43 p.m. His last breath I will never forget. It was like he could see the other side. He was so relieved. It was this long, beautiful sight. It was probably the longest breath he ever had. It was the most peaceful breath. It was, it was the most beautiful sound. Um, it was like he could see the other side. I was so relieved. It was the most wonderful experience I'd ever been through. And I and Cora and I had an opportunity to give Logan a bath after he passed away. It felt like the story of Christ. And when he died, how the apostles gave him a bath and were so respectful of his body. It was amazing. I wrapped him up in a blanket and I held him, continued to hold him for two, about two hours until his body turned cold. Cora had grown so much from this experience and our marriage is stronger than it's ever been. We love our love and I can't wait for the day we can reunite to the family again. I wanted to share this story because as you know, I didn't choose this. I didn't want this and I didn't know how I could do it. It's amazing the things you can do with the power of faith and prayer. I started taking photos of children with terminal illnesses uh, for parents whose children were passing away. And I met some incredible parents who were losing their children and have grown such a bond with all of them. Because of my experience with Logan, it has taught me to have compassion for those who are going through the same thing. One of my biggest regrets is at the hospital the night Logan passed away. They asked me if I wanted a photographer to come in and take some photos of him. And, um, and I thought to myself, why would I want that? Like, ew, like who would even think of asking something like that? So because, um, that, that, but looking back on that now is my biggest regret. So because of what I, I am offering to take pictures for parents who are losing babies and children who are passing away to give them that precious gift. I always tell parents prior that they will be so happy they have these photos and really they fill the time they want them. The time does heal and they will be so glad they have them. Um, even though Logan is not here and he's been gone for 15 years, I still learn something from him every year. I am grateful for eternal families, and I am grateful that I'm able to be his mom.